Hey, Tim Destacio here back at my house and we're just going to shoot a quick video about taking static pressure readings. I haven't done one of those videos in a while and I want to be able to showcase my toy here. Not really a toy, it's a great tool. The DG8 from TEC, the Energy Conservatory. This is a great handheld precision manometer. I want to show you how to use it in order to take static pressure readings. The thing about airflow is that it's one of the most important things to test and to use in diagnosis, but it's also one of the hardest things to do so accurately. And a static pressure check is the very basic way of checking airflow. We're going to use static pressure, we're going to compare it against the blower chart that comes from the manufacturer. Now that is not a perfect test. There are some limitations and we're going to go over that in the video. But for now, we're going to show you, as a service technician, how you can take a fairly accurate airflow reading from your air handler just with using static pressure and the blower chart. So if you've never done that before, stick around, I'll show you how. Now this is my home system. I use this as sort of my little playground, my test lab. So I've got a bunch of stuff here I don't want you to pay attention to. Now with that said, we do need to talk about other air handlers that are tied into the same duct system. Because these air handlers can affect the duct pressure as well. If you think we've got an air handler, we're blowing into the supply plant and we want to measure the static pressure there. Uh, but we got this small air handler also putting pressure in there. Uh, that's going to throw things off. The factory did not have a dehumidifier blowing into the supply duct when they uh, quantified that uh, static pressure and turned it into CFMs. The other thing that you want to make sure whenever you take a static pressure reading is that the internal components of your air handler are clean. Because if they're not, you, the reading that you get will not accurately convert to uh, CFMs. So, of course, in this air handler, what are the two components that we're worried about? Well, we want to make sure that the coil is clean. On a brand new system that you're starting up, you typically don't have to worry about that. But on an older system that you're trying to figure out if you've got an airflow problem, if that coil is dirty, you're not going to be able to trust this test. And that's really another limitation of the static pressure test. The other component that you want to verify is clean is your blower wheel. Now, if your blower wheel has even a thin film, film of dust, we're not talking about having a rug on it like we see in a lot of those older units with poor filtration that haven't been serviced in a long time. I'm talking about just a thin film of dust that could affect the static pressure that your fan is able to make. So, uh, again, if you're working on an older system, you've got to make sure these components are clean. If they aren't, then your static pressure airflow test is not going to be as accurate as it should be. Again, a limitation of this test. The other thing to consider is where we put our test ports. Now, I didn't say holes, I said test ports, because when we drill holes in ducts in HVEC, we are not drilling holes, we are installing test ports. So we want to install the test ports immediately before and after the air handler because that is how the system was tested in the lab. So if you notice, I've got a media filter kit here, but I will be reading the static pressure immediately before my air handler, not on the entering side of that air handler, rather between the media filter and the air handler. Same thing here in the supply duct. Uh, again, I want to remove anything that might be in the way. Now, what do you do when you have a furnace and case coil? A lot of times these case coils are butted right up to a furnace. Where would you read your supply static? Well, let's flip over to a previous video I did a few years ago uh, with the furnace that we had installed, and I'll show you where to put your static pressure uh, test ports there. Then we'll come back to this video. Okay, guys, this is a lesson on how to read total external static pressure on a gas furnace with an air conditioner coil. So you want to make sure that you're reading that static pressure on either side of your air handler. In this case, our air handler is a furnace. Now, sometimes you have an evaporator coil that's butted up right to your furnace, and guys will take that reading after the coil. That's not correct. You have to read it right there at the outlet of the furnace. So you end up drilling a hole right here somewhere. Just be careful. Use a unit bit. You're not going to hurt anything, and that's where you would take your supply reading. In this case, I have a duct transition that's between my furnace and my coil, so I can take my reading there. On the return side, we do have a media filter, so we want to make sure we take it after the media filter but before the furnace. Sometimes you have a media filter that's butted right up to your furnace. In that case, you have to take it right here. you got to drill another hole in your furnace. Just be careful. It's okay. 
Okay, we talked about where to put our test ports, uh, but the other thing we need to consider is where we put it in the ductwork. We've chosen this spot, this is immediately after the air handler, but in a perfect world, we'd want a nice straight line piece of duct that would have very little turbulence, so we'd have a very accurate reading. Unfortunately, because of space constraints and because we live in the real world and we don't always have that luxury, we've got to do the best we can. And that's one of the limitations of quantifying airflow with static pressure, because sometimes you can't get an accurate static pressure reading. You try your best. So what I've done is drilled several test ports over the last few months, trying to find an accurate location for it. And out of all those test ports, the one that bounced around the least was right here. So that's what we're going to be using. So you may notice that I've got a hose here sticking into the duct, and that is acceptable. Some of the purists out there that are going to watch the video are going to have a complete conniption, and, and that's okay. Um, this is in the absence of a static pressure probe. You can do this. You've got to make sure that your hose is perpendicular to the duct. But here's the better way of doing it. We've got a static pressure probe, and you're going to want two of these things. Now, there's a difference between a static pressure probe and a pitot tube. The pitot tube is going to have a hole at the end and holes at the side because it is reading not only static pressure but velocity pressure. Let's not worry about all that terminology. A static pressure probe is only going to have holes running alongside. It's not going to have a hole at the end. And so what this static pressure probe is going to do is going to go here in the duct and we're going to stick it in here just like that. We're going to put that probe in the direction of airflow. Well, unfortunately, with this supply duct that I've got, the supply plenum, where's the direction of airflow? What's well, going that way, then it's turning that way. There's a lot of turbulence here. Now, on my return, it's a little bit easier to determine what the direction of airflow is because it's going that way. So in that case, we would put our probe in, in the direction of airflow, and we just connect our tube to that. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is get our air handler running. Now, we need to think about what the purpose of the test is. When it only gets a G call, it's going to run at a slower blower speed. So in this case, this is a two-stage system. I am going to get this thing calling for two stages. If you're worried about blasting your customer out of the house with too much heating or too much cooling, just go outside and turn your outdoor disconnect off. The air handler is not going to know the difference. But again, you want to get this system running as it would run in the field for the mode of testing that you're trying to run it at. So, all right, my air handler is rocking and rolling. It took a few minutes for it to ramp up. Again, modern units are going to have some logic in them that maybe they're not going to react as quickly as the older units did. So you want to make sure that you allow the unit to stabilize. Now, what I really like about the DG8 is that it is constantly recalibrating itself. So with no hoses on, I'm at zero pascals. For this test, though, we're going to want to set it to inches in water column because that's typically what we use to read static pressure. We use pascals for reading building pressure, duct pressure, of course, inches of water column, sometimes you see it inches of H2O, sometimes you see the little inches quotation, WC, WG, all those things are talking about the same thing, inches of water column. It's a very minute uh, measurement of pressure. Okay, we've got our air handler running, we've got all our hoses hooked up, and we are reading 0.25-ish SATA pressure. It's going to bounce around a little bit in the second and third decimal point, but if you're taking a reading and it's bouncing at the first number past the decimal point, that's a problem. You need to find a better location for your test port. But in this case, we're running around 0.25 inches of water column static pressure. That's usually lower than what you're going to see in the field. I designed this duct system for a lower static pressure. And then after that, I further reduced my air handler speed in the dead of summer because I realized my system did not have to run that much airflow. So a uh, typical system you're going to see in the normal range is going to be between 0.4 and 0.7. Uh, the air handlers typically are tested around 0.5, but that's in the spec data for the air handler, so don't apply that across the board. Uh, but the next thing we're going to do is figure out what do we do with that reading? What does that mean? Okay, so the next thing that you want to do is get the installation manual out to your air handler. I've never seen an installation manual that didn't have something with a blower chart or some way to convert static pressure, dip switch settings, 
speed tap settings into airflow. So this is the installation manual to my Bosch air handler. And what they want you to do is pay special attention to where the dip switches are set in the air handler. Now every unit is going to be a little bit different, but this particular unit has got a bank of four dip switch right here. And what really we're paying attention to is dip switches one and two. Three and four do something else. Now we're going to find what dip switch setting we're working with on this air handler. So as you can see from the previous little clip, both those dip switches were set to off. So that's what we're dealing with right here. Is both of them are set to off. So what this is telling us is that when we're getting only Y1 or a G call, we're running a speed number one. When we're getting a Y2 or a W call, this is gonna run a higher fan speed and that's gonna get speed number two. Well, again, that still doesn't tell us what CFMs we're running. Now well, let's go to the next step. As you can see, speed tap one is considered low. Speed tap two is considered medium low. Okay, the next thing you're gonna do is find the blower chart. It's really easy to skip over the notes, but the notes are super important. So a couple things that we wanna pay attention to is that the airflow performance is based on the cooling performance data with a coil and no filter in place. So we'd wanna remove the internal air filter that would normally come with this air handler, which we've already done. We yanked it out, threw it away as soon as I installed the system because I was putting in a media filter. But we wanna make sure that we're reading this chart in a way that the factory has tested this air handler. The next thing we wanna do is find the model air handler we're dealing with. Because a lot of times these books come uh, for the entire range of the air handler models, all the way from a ton and a half to five ton or whatever the range that they come sh uh, from the factory in, you're gonna have the same manual. So you're gonna have to find within that blower chart which air handler you're dealing with. Now, we are dealing with the 36 model air handler. This is a quote unquote three ton air handler. And as you can tell, we've got our speed taps one through five. Now remember from the previous clip, we had speed tap number one for single stage and speed tap two when we were running two stages of heating and cooling. Uh, so we're gonna go with this speed tap two because that was the tap that was being used during that static pressure test. All right, so we've located our air handler. We know which line of these five settings that we're gonna be. Next thing, we've got a match where this line intersects with the static pressure that we, wrote, that we read. So if you recall, we were reading 0.25. So that's gonna be somewhere between 0 0.2 and 0 0.3, right? Well, looks like we're somewhere between 808 and 700. So somewhere maybe around 750, 760 CFMs. A little bit of interpolation has to be done. And that's one of the limitations of this test. You're not gonna get an exact number but at least by doing this test, you're going to be in the ballpark. Okay, so even though I have a three ton air handler and technically my outdoor model number is for a three ton unit, I've got the dip switch up there set to two ton because that is all the heating and cooling that I need is that 24,000 BTUs. And really in the dead of summer, I very rarely go into second stage and definitely in the winter, I have not seen the system on its own go into second stage yet. But what I want us to understand is that somewhere in between 808 and 700 CFM is where this air handler is running. But again, we don't know exactly where that is, what exact number. And I'm gonna show you in future videos a better way, a more accurate way to read air handler CFMs that also takes into account some of the inconsistencies with static pressure. But that'll be a video for another time. All right, so just to review, static pressure is a very quick way to be able to quantify airflow. It's sort of a rough measurement. It's not exact. For one thing, your static pressure test ports may not be in an ideal situation because you're not working with an ideal duct system that gives you a lot of straight line duct with very little turbulence. Sometimes you just got to use what you got, which is going to throw that reading off just a little bit. Another thing that you got to worry about, especially with older equipment, is, is the coil dirty, is the blower dirty. Just a thin film of dust on either of these can directly affect that static pressure reading. And then when you convert that over to airflow using the blower chart, it's not going to be the true airflow. A lot of things 
can throw off that reading. And that's why static pressure, it's quick, it's rough, it's dirty, it'll get you by. It can kind of get you in the ballpark, whether you need to troubleshoot airflow further, whether you can set it aside and maybe look for another reason why there are comfort or other issues with the system. But there are better ways to quantify airflow. And I'm going to get into that in a future video. For now, thanks for watching. And as always, be safe.